It's an old mystery yet to be solved, deciding who got to North America first. The study of early humans in the New World has been very political and very controversial for over 125 years. For much of the 20th century, archaeologists generally agreed that the earliest people to populate North America were the Clovis people, dating back to some 12 to 13,000 years ago. Then, in April of 2017, a group of scientists in California make a surprising announcement. Welcome, and thank you for joining us this morning at the San Diego Natural History Museum as we share some exciting news about a discovery made right here in San Diego. The team says these artifacts, now on display at the museum, reveal that early humans made it to North America 130,000 years ago, more than 100,000 years earlier than anyone previously thought. The 130,000 year age of the site that's really the most extraordinary result of our research, and I, I realize that 130,000 years is a big number when, it, when we're thinking about the uh, early peopling of the Americas. This scientific bombshell began unfolding when California Department of Transportation workers uncovered a surprising find while working on a highway. Back in 1992, Caltrans was doing improvements to um, State Route 54. Uh, Richard Cerruti, who is a field paleontologist here at the museum, was monitoring the excavations on the very north side of the freeway alignment and saw this little puff of tusk material being scraped up by an excavator and said, stop, Let's, let me go look at this. The tusk that Richard Cerruti found belonged to an ancient mastodon, one of millions that used to roam North America until they were driven extinct by hunting or climate change roughly 11,000 years ago. But that wasn't the only artifact Cerruti and his team uncovered. We were exploring that initial discovery and in the process uncovered not only tusk material but some bone material and some rocks. The occlusal surface of this uh, cone of this molar has been broken totally away so you're seeing the dentine. This explains why we're getting these little fragments of enamel throughout the site but it doesn't explain the mechanism. There are Anomalous fragments of rock, anomalous fragments of tooth enamel scattered throughout the site that just don't make sense in a natural depositional environment. So this juxtaposition of these objects is not typical. And we felt that it was important to produce a map of the site where we precisely plotted the position of all the bones and the stones or whatever else is in there so that we can understand what the general pattern is. This is a map that summarizes what we found at the Cerruti Macedon site. So this rock and that rock fit together, and they broke on that anvil right there. And these are the tusks of the Macedon, a single individual, one horizontal and the one we looked at that's vertical. Another anvil, and the, the scatter of broken bones, including spirally fractured bones. And over a five-month period, this picture emerged. The picture that emerged indicated to the museum scientists that the mastodon bones had likely been broken apart at the site after the animal's death by several large cobblestones that were used by humans to smash them. The thing that uh, is impossible to explain at this point, hydrologically or geologically, is the presence of these big boulders in and uh, yeah. intimately associated with the bone. So this is one of the cobbles that we hypothesized was used as a hammer stone. And you can see it's a circular or disc-shaped cobble. And if you look closely, there's some striations coming off of that that are indication, indications of where this flake has come off. I, I like to think of this as kind of a, a MacGyver moment 130,000 years ago where, where there was a a carcass of a mastodon. Um, these people were trying to recover raw materials from it. 
they had a problem. How do, how do we break these bones? They look over into the active river channel, find some cobbles of the appropriate size and weight, bring them back to the site. Almost two decades after the mastodon's discovery, Demaray sent several of the mastodon bones to Jim Paces at the U.S. Geological Survey, who used state-of-the-art radiometric dating to determine their age. So what do we got in here, Steve? It looks like vertebra. It does. We conducted hundreds of analyses on the specimens sent from the museum, and we came to the conclusion that they were broken while they were fresh, and that had to be about 130,000 years ago. The proof that humans may have arrived in North America more than 100,000 years earlier than previously thought is far from conclusive. After all, no actual human remains from this era have been found. But Dr. Stephen Holland says the evidence is compelling. He was part of the team that evaluated the findings from the San Diego excavation. I said, I can't get my mind around this. This site has to be really, really old. But yet, here's evidence of humans. I said, it goes against everything I thought I knew and everything I have ever been taught. But yet, here's the evidence right in front of me. And I now have to deal with this. 